All right, so one of the things we want to talk about today is DevOps. We hear DevOps very frequently as it relates to developers deploying some type of application. It could be a SaaS app, a line of business app, something internal. Uh, and really DevOps is kind of a smooching of developer and operations. And really the whole goal of it was to really put the power of, of defining infrastructure into developers' hands. So what used to happen before was you would have developers who would write some code for a given application, tell an operations team or infrastructure team what they need, and they'd have to work together to get it built and deployed. So a much deeper talk, topic to talk just for software. But today I really wanted to talk about DevOps for IT people. But wait a minute, I'm not a developer, I'm an IT person. Why would I need to do DevOps? Well, some of the principles that are, that are created inside of DevOps really apply as well for IT people. Um, it's just that sometimes there's, there's a gap in the language that we talk about. So when we take a look at a, a more traditional infrastructure, a lot of, let's really focus on the Windows infrastructure. We have things like Active Directory. We may have a file server. Uh, and we can have a whole host of different, you know, line of application servers. And those application servers could be load balance servers, individual servers, deployed in any different way. And those servers could be Windows boxes, Linux boxes, whatever, whatever you really want. These applications also typically use some type of data store. Could be using a file system, could be using something like SQL for Microsoft or MySQL or, or anything in that nature. Once you build out this environment, you think, well, I built it once and I just kind of operated from there. The challenge is that really every day there's something changing in your environment. Sometimes those changes are people. Sometimes those changes are the, the, the rights that these people have, permissions, access, all of these things. And these rights normally affect different applications and different services. And over time, your IT staff that uh, you know that you built it built up over the years, or that you've been a part of, tends to change. Other parts of the department, they they uh, they get promoted. They might leave the business. What ends up leaving when they adjust in the staffing is a lot of knowledge, both where things are and how they got defined, and explain and and explaining uh, why that definition happened that way. So what, where does DevOps play in all of this? Well, today there's a lot of tools that are out there. Uh, some of this has been around there for years in terms of uh, unattended installations for like servers and desktops, uh, a lot of scripts. So back in the day when I used to do a lot of VB scripts or, or other types of or batch files, um, you know, this type of automation has been around for, for quite some time. Not really the popular way with, with Microsoft is PowerShell. There's other tools, like LSA Chef and Puppet. Um, even for Microsoft Desire State config, uh, configuration um, is there that helps automate these processes. But still, what ends up happening is if one of these IT people, just one, did a really good job of automating it, the other people don't know that it's there. They don't know the changes. People that came in don't understand what's there. A lot of that information gets lost. So this is really the powerful place where you can have DevOps to both not just automate what you're doing so it self-describes your activities, uh, but it's also a place of maintaining that that information. Is there an overhead? Sure, anytime you automate or script anything, there's there's some type of overhead, but the payoff is really downstream, either because other people can use it, you can leverage it, um, and you, you don't forget the information. So one of the parts that's out there today for Microsoft, um, and really I should maybe make this a little, little happy cloud, if you will. Uh, so this is a, uh, so with Azure DevOps, and one of the great things around Azure DevOps is it really provides uh, a lot of great tools that is great both for developers as well as for infrastructure people. So one of the places I love to start off with is the repository, which is called repo for short. And this is really Git based. So Git is got one of the standards out there today. Um, like GitHub is based off of it where you can do source code management uh, and kind of really work as a team. Um, one of the really nice things about putting it here inside of the repo is that any script you create, and it could be in any language that you want. If you don't, if you want to do it more in, in Bash and use some of the Linux uh, extensibility that's inside of Windows, or just do it for Linux, fine. You can put it inside of the repo and and still share it and, and have it available. How do you get access to this one? It's it's today it's it's free, so you can get access to it. Uh, this we'd love to use the cloud service of this, although there's also a server component, uh, and then being able to access it as a as an IT person or a systems engineer. There's a web view of it, which is you know kind of a nice way to get at it quickly. But the other really cool thing uh, that's also from Microsoft 
uh, is Visual Studio Code, which is free and has extensions for things like PowerShell. So Colorify, it understands how to extend and talk to, uh, talk to Git and get connected with this. So with these, with these pieces, as an engineer and IT person that can, that can connect to this from any of, any of these items, I can now start to get any kind of scripts that I use, even if it means creating a person in Office 365, even if it means creating a user in Active Directory, even if it means standing up that line of business application server one more time because the, the application team needs it and maybe they haven't gone fully virtualized, or maybe they have, but they haven't really automated their processes, but I'm still part uh, or responsible to participate. I can use this even if I'm myself, as one IT person in an organization, I can do it as a part of a team, as well as later on, I can do it when I'm a part of, when I have other developers um, that are part of, of the services that I'm trying to provide, and those developers could be internal people, and they could be external people. Either way, the nice thing is that anytime I build a box, I build a service, I make a change, I update our security practices, I should really script it, test it, and then store it and document it on the system. Right now to do a lot of times people just create it in their one-off folder, put it in Dropbox, put it in OneDrive, put it in a file system. Um, people don't know how to use it. Uh, it doesn't do anything else for them. It's not aware, you know, people aren't aware of, of of, that, of its existence here really makes it very public amongst all of them as, as much as you want it to, to leverage. Uh, and the nice thing is, you know, uh, kind of extending this scenario is if you're doing uh, Office 365, which leverages Azure Active Directory and you're connecting these sources, then the permissions that you've assigned here or if there's a cloud only user also apply inside of the repository. So this way you can have full control of the scripts that manage this environment, make it available to the right people in your organization to make it and, and allow it to secure them. So that's just one area within DevOps that really makes it nice to both use this available infrastructure, how you could apply it across these different areas. Again, whatever way you want to script it, whatever language you want to script, you want to do it in Java, want to run Java code to do it. I wouldn't recommend doing that, <laughs> that for infrastructure, but you could. And you could still put that inside of the repo, still share it with different people. Uh, and put it that, that nature. If you want to go to the to really the next part of this, which is, well, hey, I, I, I build these things out for our line of business applications, very important. And sometimes my app teams want to be able to do the same thing here and I have to create another staging environment or testing environment. Um, if I've already scripted all of these pieces to then run those same scripts, either on a scheduled or on-demand nature, I can do that in here. Um, you know, leveraging the same basic infrastructure. So, uh, for example, like let's say I have, um, uh, I, I wanna, I wanna do that scenario. I wanna build this out on demand. Uh, how can I do it? Now, let's, let's say right now this runs at a data center that we have, and I actually wanna use something from Azure. We have a connection with Azure, and I wanna use Azure infrastructure. How can I do the same thing there? Well, remember the repo is capturing all the scripts that tells us what to go do, automating the process of what to build first, how to compile the code, where to deploy it. And what to do next, that's inside of something called a uh, pipeline. So inside of the Azure DevOps, there's a service called pipeline. And in pipeline, you can define that and essentially recreate this whole thing that you've done. And how do you know that you've been doing it? Because you've been writing those scripts and following a good process. And now you can deploy that inside of Azure if you wanted. If you wanted to use a different uh, cloud service provider, if you want to do it on-prem with physical box, if you want to do it using virtual machines, you can automate that as well. But that can be defined in your pipeline and this can run on a schedule basis, on demand basis, you know, whatever you need to go do. Again, because you're trying to support either developer team or you're trying to support a major change in your environment. Like, hey, we want to make big upgrades here. But before we do it, we'd like to test it out. And whatever we test out, how do we make sure we do it again? Well, you write a script for it. It's an repository that tested it based on something. So this is really kind of a change in the practice uh, versus let's plan a lot in IT and then it looks good, let's give it a shot and then see if it fails or not. Uh, so this allows you to really describe this in code, very reputable, store it as a cloud service, use it for what you manage today or even services you want to do in the future. So this is just a kind of a quick overview of what you can do to use a DevOps-like principles as your DevOps services to do a lot of the things that you want even if you're just doing IT services. So I highly recommend that you take a look at it uh, and later on we'll kind of explain some ways to get started.